This series looking at the effects of fasting mimicking diet on health has brought us all over the place from fat loss to organ regeneration, brain health, lifespan, cancer protection, and more. Uh, but all of these results have been in animals. And if you've been following this video series, you know that animal studies may not translate to humans. My experience reading the research, they often do, but not always, or not completely. Well, let's stop looking at the animal data. Let's look at us, humans. At least I hope. All the data from here on out is exclusively in humans. And while we will get into some interesting data, there are certain limitations here that we wouldn't see with the animals. Like we can't cut a human's brain open after they consume a fasting mimicking diet or remove their heart. That all gives me some mad scientist vibes. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive. But still, to think that a diet can possibly mimic fasting and it only needs to be used for a few days a month or even every several months is astounding. So with what we can investigate, let's see what does translate. Clearly, we aren't talking about animals being placed on their control diet or the fasting mimicking diet anymore. The study design changes here. People were recruited and split into equal groups, either told to continue consuming their usual nutrition, so as you can likely guess, the control group. Then the other group was instructed to consume the fasting mimicking diet. We'll abbreviate it as FMD. The fasting mimicking diet, or FMD, consisted of a five-day plant-based diet, wherein participants of the study group consumed between 30 and 50% of their calories necessary to maintain their weight. I'll give you more specifics on the diet at the end of the video, but for now, they were instructed to consume this FMD for five days, known as one FMD cycle, then were allowed to return to their usual nutrition for the rest of the month, about 25 days. Then the next month, they did another FMD cycle, then returned to their diet for the rest of the month, and then repeated once more for a third month. They had measures performed on them for a series of health markers at baseline, so before being on either diet, control, or FMD, then immediately after the first FMD cycle, and then again at the end of the three months for the control group, and one week back on their usual nutrition after the last FMD for the FMD group. The researchers then compared the FMD group against the control. So what did they discover? Did the results in our previous videos translate? Let's begin with body composition, body weight, body fat, and lean mass. The control group experienced no change in body weight, but why would they? They were instructed to stick to their usual diet for three months. However, the FMD group experienced about a 4% reduction in body weight. However, interestingly, that did not translate to body fat loss, at least not from the torso and no differences in lean mass, which encompasses muscle, cartilage, bone, and other non-fat tissues. So that seems a bit underwhelming, but keep in mind that this was measured after just one FMD cycle. So while the weight loss was probably water weight or came partially from non-trunk fat, there's no doubt it's headed in the right direction in relation to health. Focusing our attention towards blood sugar and ketones, we see that blood sugar increased in the control diet group, but was significantly reduced in the FMD group, over a 10% drop in blood sugar. Then ketones, because, well, the control didn't change their diet, experienced zero change. Still low levels of ketones, but the FMD group experienced a 3.5-fold increase. That's likely because even though they were consuming carbohydrates in a high percentage, that percentage is based on extremely low calories, yielding a low carbohydrate diet regardless. But would a full-on fast or even a ketogenic diet yield higher ketone levels? I think so. Now, here are some really interesting results looking at insulin-like growth factor. Again, control showed no changes, but the FMD experienced a serious drop of almost 30%. Insulin-like growth factor, or IGF, is linked to so many processes within the body, but one of its functions is to promote growth, although it is also linked to inflammation. So reduced levels would indicate reduced overall growth in the body. That can be a great thing when discussing something like cancer, as we saw in the previous videos. It can be detrimental when the body is growing, especially in children, if IGF isn't around to facilitate that growth. But 
What is especially intriguing is the additional body of literature indicating the relationship between IGF and C-reactive protein, which is another marker of inflammation and health. Both are associated with the liver and have widespread effects in the body. Other research indicates a link between low IGF levels and high C-reactive protein levels being detrimental to health, especially cardiovascular health. So we have half of the recipe, low IGF levels, and C-reactive protein didn't budge. If anything, it seems to be closer to going down than up, but for certain, it didn't increase. Uh, I find it unlikely we're looking at the same scenario related to detrimental health effects. I think that these results indicate reduced inflammation signals and reduced growth, among surely many other implications. Reduced inflammation was also seen in some of the previous data in animals corroborating this line of thought. So far, this data implies that a fasting mimicking diet reduced blood sugar, increased ketones, reduces weight, insulin-like growth factor, C-reactive protein. All of this data directly shows likely improved blood sugar regulation, healthier weight maintenance, and indirectly shows possible reduced inflammation in the body. These positive health effects were accomplished by consuming a fasting mimicking diet cycle that worked like this. Day one, consuming 54% of maintenance calories consisting of 10% protein, 56% fat, and 34% carbohydrates. Then the following two to five days, consuming 34% of maintenance calories consisting of 9% protein, 44% fat, and 47% carbohydrates. Consuming that diet over the five days focused on plant-based foods every month will lead to the results shown. And yet, there's more to this story. Because while we covered the effects during the fasting mimicking diet, how long do these effects last? Do they disappear the next day after returning to your original diet? Or do they last for a while? Also, are there other health effects that we haven't covered here? Well, I have the final video of this series as well as another series exclusively covering the long-term effects of this diet in humans, special conditions, and a personalized fasting mimicking diet calculator that can all be accessed if you join my insiders community. It's a great opportunity to access exclusive content, be part of a science-minded discussion, and get continuous access to a growing number of perks. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you there. Thank you.